Hey everybody, uh, Mr. Covey here, and in this video we're going to go over uh, simplifying square roots and then also solving quadratic equations with square roots, okay? So this is on page three of your note packet. Please follow along and take good notes as we go through this. Um, the first thing is simplifying square roots, and this is kind of just a prerequisite skill that I want to make sure we have here, okay? So there are certain numbers that are called perfect squares that you actually know the square root of. So 64 is an example there. When you see something like the square root of 64, you actually know what the square root of 64 is. It's 8. You can type that into your calculator um, to verify that, but 8 times 8 is 64. In other words, the square root of 64 is 8. So if you're doing a problem and you have a square root that you actually know what the square root of that number is, or you type it in your calculator and it comes out as just a number, do that. For other square roots, though, the square root of them is not a whole number. It's a decimal. And the reason for that is because the number is not a perfect square. Okay? There isn't a number squared that's 20. Okay, well, there is a number squared, it's just not a whole number, okay? If you go to your calculator and type in the square root of 20 into your calculator, it will spit out a decimal, okay? So I typed in the square root of 20, it spit out 4.472. It's a long, long, long decimal. We are not going to write down that decimal, okay? We could write it down. It is equal to it, but instead, uh, we are going to do something called simplifying this square root, okay? And the way we do that is as follows. You take the square root of 20, and you're going to split it up into two separate square roots, two different numbers. These two numbers have to multiply to 20. So I'm going to find a purple number and a green number, and they multiply to 20. There's lots of options you could use, 2 and 10, 5 and 4, 1 and 20. But you want to split it up so that the first one, the one you put here, is a perfect square. Remember, a perfect square means it's a number that you know the square root of. I will write down a little list here of perfect squares that you should write down on your sheet as well. Okay, so here's a list of perfect squares. You should write this down on your notes, please. So these numbers here are the perfect squares. Why? Because they're the numbers left squared. So you should pause the video right now and make sure you write down all of those perfect squares. Okay. So be a perfect thing that come around to our test way down the road. We should. Uh, oh. Um, so back to this problem. Make sure you've paused and, and written those down. We're going to split 20 up into two numbers that multiplied together are 20. And one of them, the first one, needs to be a perfect square. So looking at this list, you can use your calculator. I hope that it's clear that 4 and 5 are those two numbers. Okay, because 4 times 5 is 20, and 4 is on that list. The reason we want that first number to be a perfect square is that we know the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So we can write the square root of 20 as 2 times the square root of 5. Okay. What we've done is simplify this. This is the simplified version of the square root of 20. Okay. They are equivalent to each other. They're equal to each other. So if you ever want to check if you did this right, if you type the square root of 20 in and get a decimal, and you type 2 square root of 5 into your calculator, they're equal to each other. They should give you out the same decimal. And that's because all we're doing is simplifying it. Okay? You've done simplifying before in math. Think about like when you take 3 divided by 6 and you simplify it to 1 half. That's because those two fractions are equal to each other. Okay, they're the same as each other. We're just simplifying. What we did here 
is the same thing. 2 square root of 5 is the same as the square root of 2. Okay. Let's do one more practice together, and then I want you to try it here. Okay? So square root of 54. First, let's make sure 54 isn't a perfect square. Okay? I think you guys know that it's not a perfect square. It's not something you actually know the square root of. So instead, we're going to split it up into two square roots to try and simplify it. The two numbers I'm going to pick here and here need to multiply to 54, and the first one needs to be a perfect square. Look at my list of perfect squares, and specifically, I really want to look for the biggest perfect square that multiplies to 54. So which one of these multiplies by something to get 54? You can use your calculator if you're having times tables issues, but 9 times 6 is 54, and 9 is a perfect square, so I'm going to put it first. Now that I've split it up, the reason I chose 9 was because I know what the square root of 9 is. It's 3. I don't know what the square root of 6 is, so I'm going to leave it as the square root of 6. This is my simplified version of this. Okay, square root of 54 is the same as 3 square root of 6. Yeah. I'd like you to pause the video and try problem 4, 5, and 6. Okay, simplify the square root. Split it up. Make sure the perfect or the first number is a perfect square. Go ahead and pause and give it a try. Okay, let's check our answers real quick. So for number 4, I split it up into 25 and 2 because those multiply to 50 and 25 is one of my perfect squares. So then my answer is 5 square root of 6. For number 5, this is a bigger number, so you might have to make sure you use your calculator here to see which of these perfect squares multiplies by something to get 192. Don't forget how to do this, okay? You guys know this. If you want to check, is 49 times something 192? You can check that multiplication fact using division, right? So you can do 192 divided by 49. And see, no, it's a weird decimal. So that's not the choice, because when I split it up, I want to get two whole numbers. With 64, if you do 192 divided by 64, you get 3. And what that tells you is that 64 times 3 is 192. Again, the reason I'm using 64 and 49 is because those are two of my perfect squares. And I'm using some bigger ones to check because I have a bigger number here with 192. Okay. So that one should be 8 square root of 3. And the last one should be 4 square root of 2. Again, make sure you look for the biggest perfect square here. Because if you use one of the smaller ones, your answer is not going to be all the way simplified. So make sure you try and look for the biggest number in this list that you can divide this by and get a whole number. This is called simplifying square roots. We're going to use this when we solve these equations we're going to talk about. Okay. So now I want to transition to solving equations. Before we transition, just a really quick note that's very important. I'll make sure we're keeping track of the difference between quadratic functions and quadratic equations. Okay. Functions were what we were graphing. They looked like this. Or sometimes they looked like this. The important thing about them was on the one side, they didn't have, or sorry, on the one side, they either had an f of x or a y. And then the other stuff was with x's. So there was two different variables here. There was an x and a y. And our quadratic equations, we're only going to have x's. Okay. There's not going to be another variable. With the quadratic functions, like last chapter, we focused on graphing them a lot, or doing algebra to make them look different to help us graph them. In this chapter, when we're looking at quadratic equations, 
what we're really going to be sorry what we're really going to be doing is solving those equations we're going to figure out what x is and that's what i want to talk about now okay. so we're going to talk about how to solve quadratic equations with square roots you'll get the hang of this but this only applies if your initial equation starts out looking like that or like that okay it can look a little bit different but in general, this technique is only going to work for some problems. Okay, I want to do one example with you of uh, both of these types, and I want you to try one also. Okay, so I'm going to write over here a few steps you can follow to solve equations with square roots, and we're going to follow those steps. The first step is going to be get the squared part. by itself. Okay, so let's start with this equation here. I want to get the squared part by itself. In this case, the thing that's being squared is x, just x. So I want to get that by itself. How do I get it by itself? Well, I need to get rid of the other stuff. So I need to add 31 to both sides. You can use your calculator here. The squared isn't by itself. The x squared is not by itself yet. So you get rid of the 4. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4. And now I've got the squared part by itself. Next, square root both sides. The reason we use a square root here is because the square root and the square cancel each other out. Yeah, that's what square roots and squares, they're inverses, they cancel each other out. But if I square root the left side, I have to square root the right side. So on the left side, I just have x. And on the right side, I have the square root of 20. You might remember from last year, something really important that you need to add when you square root both sides of an equation is a plus or a minus. And what this means is that there's two different answers, a positive one and a negative one. It's important that you do this right here in this process. Stop right here and add a plus or minus. Cool, I hope that's ringing a bell from last year. The last thing you need to do, actually I'm gonna say there's five or four steps. The third step, we don't really have to do in this problem, but sometimes there's going to be a situation where we have to get x by itself. In this case, the x is by itself, so we don't need to do step three. We'll see some when you do. And then the last part is relating to what we talked about at the beginning here. You need to simplify the square root. Again, this isn't always going to happen. Three and four aren't always going to happen. But in this problem, I do need to simplify the square root. Square root of 20, I can simplify that. Break it up into square root of four and square root of five. We actually did this one earlier. And so I get x equals plus or minus two square root of five. Those are my two answers to this equation. You may remember from last year, this equation is quadratic. What makes it quadratic? It's got an x squared. And a lot of times, quadratic equations have two solutions. So I have two solutions here, positive 2 square root of 5 and negative 2 square root of 5. Some people like to write them separately so that they remember that there's two. So if you want to write them separately, you could be like, one answer is 2 square root of 5. One answer is negative 2 square root of 5. I want you to give this one here a try. So if you could pause your video and give this one here a try. Look at your steps, try and follow them. You guys can do this. Go we'll give this one here a try. Okay, so for number two here, the first thing I did was I got the squared thing by itself. So I subtracted one from both sides, divided both sides by negative two. And I got x squared equals 5. 
Then I square rooted both sides to cancel out the square. But if I square root the left side, I need to square root the right side. I remember to add a plus or minus. That was actually done in this case because the x was already by itself and I couldn't simplify this square root. So remember that you can't simplify all square roots. If you think about five and you go back to your list of perfect squares, one doesn't really help us, so we don't even really need to think about that. None of these numbers go into five. So there's no way to actually simplify it, and so you just leave it. Okay. I want to show you a slightly different looking equation, but that we can also solve with square roots. So if you look at this equation here, it looks more like this. This is going to be a perfect one to solve using square roots. We're going to follow these same four steps. We can totally do this. This won't be bad at all. First, I gotta get the square thing by itself. So I'm gonna move the 84 to the other side by adding 84 to both sides. When I say the squared part, this whole part is being squared. So that's the whole thing I'm trying to get by itself. Why is it not by itself right now? I still have that two out front. Remember, it's a two times that, so to get rid of it, I'm going to divide both sides by two. Okay. Now I have the squared thing by itself. I'm going to square root both sides. On the left side, that cancels out the squared. And on the right side, I just have square root of 42. Add the plus or minus right now. Don't forget about that. In this case, I do have a step three. I need to get the x by itself. The x is not by itself yet because I have that minus one. So I'm going to add one to both sides. And I'm going to get x equals one plus or minus the square root of 42. Notice that when I added the one, it didn't go together with the square root of 42 because that's underneath the square root. Okay, I just put it out front and I said, oh, it's one plus or minus the square root of 42. The last thing I should do here is try and simplify the square root. So I'm trying to look for two numbers that multiply to 42, one of which is one of my perfect squares. And you can mess around in your calculator, but it can't uh, be simplified. So I'm done. That's my answer. Negative one, or sorry, positive one plus or minus the square root of 42. Yeah. I want you to give this problem here a try. Okay? Pause the video, give that one a try, and then we can talk about it. Following our same four steps. Okay, I tried to clear away some of the other stuff so we could see better. So, first thing I did was get the squared part by itself. So, how did I do that here? Well, I added 81 to both sides and divided both sides by 3 to get to this part here. Okay? This whole thing is the squared thing, and now it's by itself. So, I'm ready to move on to step 2, square root both sides. From here to here, I'm square rooting both sides. On the left side, the square and the square root cancel each other out. And on the right side, I do the square root of 27. Don't forget to add a plus or minus. And now I'm on to step three. Get the x by itself. The x isn't by itself right here. Still got that minus two. So I'm going to add two to both sides to get to this step. And then the last thing is I'm going to try and simplify the square root. Square root of 27, well, 27 is 9 times 3. I chose 9 because it's a perfect square. The square root of 9 is 3. And so I can rewrite square root of 27 as 3 square root of 3. And my answer is x equals 2 plus or minus 3 square root of 3. Cool? Okay. Uh, 
that concludes this video. Thanks for watching.